This is the FRAP Tools Felicity Dual Movement Manager. And by movement, they mean it's an excellent modulation source for your modular synth. At its most basic level, it's a descendant of a Buchla function generator. It has rise and fall times, it can act as an attack decay or attack sustain release generator, or as a simple LFO. But it goes far beyond that because it has a variety of different input options, output options, and some utility modules, including a dual flip flop or octave divider, a linear slew with separate rise and fall times and what's known as a four quadrant multiplier, or what you might know as a balanced array modulator. We're gonna start simple and look at using it as a function generator, focusing on attack decay, the shape controls, and the different ways of triggering it. Then we'll get a bit fancier, looking at different output modes and how to combine the two halves of it together to create more complex envelope shapes. Then we'll explore using it as an oscillator, first as a low frequency oscillator to create modulation sources. And again, the two halves can be combined to create more complex shapes and then using it as a VCO, an audio rate oscillator, with some additional options such as wave shaping, octave dividing, amplitude, and ring modulation. Now the FRAP tools modules are beautiful to look at, and also they can be initially a little confusing or a little cryptic. All of the symbols make sense. You just have to understand what they mean. There's a very thorough manual available online, and I'll attempt to explain what the universal symbols mean for FRAP tools modules. They're identical yellow and green halves, two separate functions that you could use individually. I have them each patched to green and yellow channels on the data. I'm using it right now to modulate the filter cutoff on the Moog Mother 32. I'm using the Moog's own AD just to open up its VCA, and we'll be focusing on using FRAP to play around with the filter. There's a few different ways of triggering it. I'm gonna turn on the VCA and the Moog for now, and use just the manual trigger button on the front panel. It's always handy to be able to manually trigger something. However, if you have a gate or trigger signal, you can also use your keyboard, sequencer, etc., to trigger it. If you patch into the jack directly above or connected to that manual trigger button, the one with the input arrow, the arrow pointing towards that jack, you'll get it to function as an envelope generator. And the function is decided by this little switch next to it. So I'm going to plug in over here. I'm right now in the middle switch position, which is attack decay. Notice that how long I'm holding the key is being ignored. It's just using the initial trigger. If you put the switch to the right hand position, it now becomes an attack sustain release generator. So now it pays attention to how long I'm holding the key down. And the third position, is repetitive mode to use as an LFO. I'm going to put it back into attack decay mode. There is a second input jack, one that's associated with this mode switch, and it basically temporarily puts it into LFO mode as long as the gate signal is high. So when I hold down a key, it's acting as an LFO, and when I release the key, it stops oscillating. Now, at full level, that might seem a bit maybe excessive, maybe not that useful, but jumping ahead a little bit, there is an output and tenure inverter for each channel of the fleece tree. So if I reduce the amount, I get some automatic synchronized wah-wah or vibrato or tremolo that's only happening when I start a new note and stops when I release a note. Just one example of the features that they've kind of packed into this nice little module. Okay, we've talked about the input side. Let's go back to normal attack decay triggering. Now let's talk about the output side. There's several different outputs for each half of the fleece tree. I'm using right now the one that's an attenuated signal. So I can be above zero volts. And I've kind of shifted my display here on data so you can see that it goes up to plus 10 volts in the attack but it has the intent inverter to go ahead and reduce the amount right here. I love these because too few modules have input intent inverters, so it's great the more modulation sources have output intent inverters. I can make it negative. I'll raise the cutoff initially. So lots of flexibility there. There's additional full level outputs. The one with one dot next to it is unipolar or one direction. In other words, it's going to start at zero volts and rise up to 10 volts. 
And then the one with two dots next to it is bipolar, positive and negative voltages. That means it's going to rest at minus five volts and go up to plus five volts. That's particularly useful when you're using it as an LFO. Because it's now going to be centered around your initial setting for your cutoff, etc. In addition to those voltage outputs, there's two gate or trigger state outputs. I'll go back to my normal output here just to clean up the patch. And let's look at these two outputs. One is an end of rise. It's a gate that's only high after the rise is finished and it goes back low when the fall has finished. If you look on the display here, let's go ahead and freeze that. You'll see that the blue trace, which is my end of rise, only goes high when that attack stage is finished. And as soon as the release or fall is finished, it goes back down to zero. So this gives you kind of a delayed trigger output for after the attack's done. Start running again. The other output is end of fall. That lets you know when the entire cycle is done. I'm going to go into the magenta input on that one. And you'll see that it rises when the fall is finished and it goes back down when a new envelope starts. These help you use the different phases of the envelope to go ahead and trigger other things inside your modular, including the other half of Felice tree, and we will get to that. There's one more interesting output, and that is an analog OR, or a MAX output, that looks at the two individual sides, the green and the yellow, and outputs only the voltage that's the highest between the two. And we'll also put that to use later, but I wanted to at least explain it while we're on that output section. Okay, so that's the inputs and outputs. The two big knobs are quite obviously the attack or rise time and the fall or release time. It can be quite a punchy envelope with very long release times. Its maximum rise and fall time is a bit over eight seconds. Underneath those two controls with lines connecting them are the shapes for the rise and fall time separately. And here's another place where Felice Ray stands out. Adjusting the shape does not change the attack and release time. On several other envelope generators, particularly ones that are based around the idea of a slope generator with feedback to change the shape, changing the shape would affect the times. But Felistre is a linear or triangle shaped rise and fall device. This wave shaping is applied only after the internal processing of those rise and fall times. If I want myself a nice logarithmic attack, I'll increase my attack time, start dialing in the shape that I want. That's an exponential rise. Go the other direction for the more typical logarithmic rise. You notice that it does re-trigger like an analog module in that it will continue on from the voltage level where it's at. But internally, it's going from where the linear voltage level is at, not necessarily where the shapes are, since the wave shaping is happening after the rise and fall times. So the re-triggering will look a little bit odd here. But it's not like a digital envelope generator that restarts from the zero. It does at least pick up some voltage from where you were. Let's dial in just for fun a log release or kind of an inverted shape, a bit of a shark fin. Or we can go for the more typical exponential release. And you notice I'm changing these shapes. And again, the times are not changing, just the shapes of the curves. I have it operating in slow mode right now, particularly when you want to use it as an oscillator, or if you want ultra fast envelope shapes, you can go to a faster mode here. The short times are very fast, very tick-like. So needless to say, it has a very wide range. That's the basic use of Felistre as an envelope generator. However, you do have some additional tricks, such as voltage control over the attack and release times, and all these different output modes, and we'll explore those next.